Hello, I'm Bruce Janney, and today in Homemade Science, I want to show you some demonstrations dealing with rotational or moment of inertia. Now, a good demonstration may start off with an inclined plane and a couple pieces of equipment that look like this. Now, these pieces are found in most physics classrooms. They're a hoop and a solid cylinder. They have the same diameter, but not the same mass. The idea is to put them at the top of the inclined plane and simply let them roll and observe what happens. After observing that the solid cylinder rolls faster, it's then usually rolled against a solid ball. And here we find that the ball is actually faster than the cylinder. Now I find that quite often students get hung up on the idea that these three pieces don't have the same amount of mass. So then I show them these pieces. Here are two wooden cylinders cut to the same size. They would have the same mass. They both have holes drilled into them, just at different positions. If we roll them down the table, we see that they accelerate at the same rate. Our next step would be to add four nuts and bolts to each one of the cylinders. Of course, they're the same size. So the cylinders continue to have the same amount of mass, it's just located at different positions on the cylinders. Now when we roll them down the table, we find that the center-weighted cylinder accelerates faster. Now, I really do like these pieces for demonstration purposes, but if I want students to understand this concept a little bit better, I want them to do a little bit of investigating for themselves. So I have a couple activities that I think might be helpful. Now, this is going to start with these wheels that have been cut out of cardboard, and I'll explain how to do this a little bit later. Uh, we can then tie those wheels together using some pencils. So we end up with something like a wheel and axle, and the investigation for students is to try and get this to roll as quickly or as slowly down that ramp as possible. They can add pennies at various positions on here, either by taping them or gluing them, and seeing what the effect is. Now, to aid students in the design process, they can do something that I like to call the marble test. You can raise your object against a marble or a golf ball to see if you're making progress. We see that this piece accelerates slower than the golf ball. This piece is pretty much even with it. This one accelerates faster than the golf ball. Here's some of the pieces that have been made in the past. These two pieces are made with the same size wheels, four pencils, and 20 pennies. Hey, yo, what's up? This design has 20 pennies acting as the axle. And the wheels don't always have to be round. Depending on how they're positioned to start, we find that these are actually faster than wheels that are circular. This student added a shelf to the wheels. The pennies would sit on it, give the wheels an extra push, and then once it was done, they would fall off. This was actually the fastest project. Students also came up with a number of ideas to make the wheels move as slowly as possible. And here's one of my favorite tools that I bought for my classroom. It can cut a variety of different sized circles out of cardboard or mat board or paper very, very quickly. It also shows us where the center is. Here's another handy tool that was good for this demonstration, a block of wood with a hole in it and a screwdriver. You can start by punching holes through the center of the wheels, put them together, and then you can add more holes where you want them. But 
The designs were then held together through friction between the wheels and pencils that were stuck through those holes. The pennants could be added by using tape to add them to the pencils, or you can simply glue them onto the outside of the wheels. Let's give these a try. And that works really well. Now, after seeing this demonstration and trying this investigation, students do get an understanding that the position of the mass does make a difference when we're looking at the moment of inertia. But I have one more demonstration that I want them to try, and this one's going to give them a real feel for it. We're starting with two rulers and four weights that, once again, are the same size. On, the, on one of the rulers, we're going to tape the weights towards the outside. And on the second ruler, we're going to tape the weights towards the center. Now that they're ready to go, take each ruler and twist it back and forth very quickly between your thumb and finger, and you should feel a big difference between them. What do you notice? This one's easier to turn than this one. What do you notice? This one's like harder to move or like put back and forth than this one. So the roller with the weight on the inside is acting like the wheel with the weights on the inside. It's easier to turn, so it can accelerate slightly quicker. The wheel with the weights on the outside had a lower angular acceleration because it had a greater moment of inertia. I think this really helps students to better understand this concept. Now, if you want to try this on a larger scale, there's a couple ways we can go. For example, I have these two blocks that I can lock on this meter stick. The blocks on the inside, it's very easy to turn and move the blocks to the outside. We're increasing the rotational inertia, much harder to turn. Now, if you don't want to make the wooden blocks, you can simply try it with a dowel rod and a couple apples and some binder clips. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, I hope you'll check out the rest of my channel and consider subscribing. As always, thanks for watching, and come back and see me again. Okay, bye.